Hey guys, in this video I got my buddy Sean with me. We're going to talk about uh, being retired in the Philippines and fighting boredom. <laughs> Stick around. Hi right, Sean, thanks for coming back. Uh, I, I made this video because I, I, you get a lot of people who come out here and I think, I don't think it's just the Philippines, but you know when people retire they get bored, there's nothing to do anymore, and I think even more so in the Philippines, they, they kind of lack like, uh, like direction or motivation. motivation, what to do and where to go. And I don't know, hey, since you've been here, have you ever been bored? A couple of times, but it, you know, there's so much to do here that's not very expensive. Yeah. I mean, like we were just talking about before you started the video. If you and I wanted to go out with our girls, or even a, a couple of other right. couples, we could rent a boat with food mm -hmm. for probably 2,500 pesos to take us island hopping the whole day. Right. So I mean, for 50, less than fifty dollars, man, you, you know, you can go out. Do you, if you were a single guy, do you think boredom is probably more of a factor, though? Yeah. yeah. That's the thing is, if you're single and you know you're not in any relationship here i've gone through a few times where i've just been at home just kind of like bored yeah. get a little get a little depressed because i didn't really know anybody yeah, and you fall back into your uh, bad routine that you had in the states sitting there watching tv all day long netflix and video you, games or maybe you know and not going out and doing something maybe I mean, going to the bar possibly <laughs> I mean, you know, but here in Dumaguete, um, in a lot of places like Dumaguete, the food's cheap enough to where you and your significant other, your girlfriend, yeah, you can go out and eat dinner every night and still maintain yeah. a decent budget to where it's not breaking the bank. For sure. Yeah, we, we do that um, maybe once or twice a week. We, we like eating at home, too, though, but... We also, uh, you know, I go out for coffee almost daily mm -hmm. just to get out of the house. Um, you know, Maya will go, she's got her own things to do and I, I have my own things to do. You, you gotta have friends and a life outside oh, yeah. of the relationship. Oh yeah, you definitely need your expat friend. Because yeah. for the most part, your Filipino gal or whoever you're with is not gonna understand what you're talking about. How? You know, there's things going on back home that you're, you're concerned right. about or you're watching. They don't even know the politics no. here in the Philippines, much less in your country. So right, and, and honestly, why would they? Exactly. Just, so now, um, as far as like friends, I've, I've got my suggestions. But how for me, it's a bit easier. I'm a, I'm a blogger, so I get a lot of people message me. They'll say, "Hey, you want to meet for a coffee?" But for a guy who's, who's not into blogging and all that stuff, how, how did you meet the majority of your friends? I've, and I've met a couple of them in the, in the elevator in the condos I, I, I've yeah. been staying in. I've met them on the street. I've, I've met them at uh, coffee shop. Coffee yeah. shops. Because one thing you'll figure out when you get here is that expats mm -hmm. seek out other expats, regardless of what nation you're from. Right. They see they see a guy that's not um, Filipino or Filipina. Mm -hmm. They want to talk to you unless they're just a stuck up asshole. But then you get the you get the guys that are with a girl that they're here for the first time or the second time, yeah. and they will avoid you like the play because they think that their girl is going to look at you and want you more than the guy that they're with. Right. So it's like you know, I've I've seen them, man. I'll be by myself, uh -huh. and man, they'll, they'll make it a point, man, to yeah, yeah, <laughs> detour from where they're walking so she won't look at you. I. It's crazy. I've come across a lot of other foreigners who are pretty rude. They don't even say hi. Oh, yeah. You walk yeah, by. yeah. yeah. You'll get that. I mean, <laughs> I don't you know, know if they... Just nice. Like, I just say hi, man. Where are you from? And they start talking to me. Yeah. start talking. I guess the, I would tell people to go kind of figure out where the expats go. You know, like in Dumaguete, they all go to Ground Zero. You literally could just pull up a chair near a table and just kind of... Hey guys. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, unless somebody's involved in a conversation you know, with somebody else, just go up and say hi. I mean, I'd say eight times out of ten, they're going to invite you to sit down with them and, and right. have a conversation. Yeah, yeah I've had uh, guys 
sitting around with a group of people and they're like, hey, do you mind if I join you? I don't know them, but no, we've never said no. <laughs> sure, I mean, uh, I, I made a lifelong friend the last time yeah. I was in Cebu, staying in the condo, met the guy in the, yeah, I remember. In, in the uh, I met Jay in, in the elevator. And I mean, we started going out for coffee three or four times a week. Yeah. So, I mean, so you kind of have to, you got to put yourself out there a little bit. Yeah, you got to get did. out of your comfort zone. You can't be so guarded all the time, no. but I mean, you know, you, and, and you know, other expats will tell you this, that you have more to fear from other expats than you do Filipinos. Yeah, yeah, so, I, I've actually discovered that. I mean, the ex, and, and another expat will screw you over faster than the Filipino will right. all day long. And believe it or not, you know, when I got here, I heard about how horrible the gossip is and blah 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 it's actually other yeah, expats are worse than some they, of the they are man they're, yeah. they're, they're like a broken uh, freaking record man if they can throw your ass under the bus <laughs> right. they will if they yeah. want your girl the girl that you're with they will they will say something to the girl to make you break up so they can date her. yeah, yeah exactly. i've had that happen yeah so have you so you you got the you get the flip side you get You'll meet some great guys, you know, we've, we've met a lot, of, we've got a lot of great friendships, and then you'll meet the big POSs, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, you, you get a, yeah, I consider Gio a lifelong friend. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that, that we'll never be friends. Right. But I can tell you, I can count on less than both hands right. the number of people that I have here in the Philippines like that. Just, I mean, keep your circle small. Yeah, I, mean, you, I agree. You don't have that. to have, you know, I'd rather have good friends, guys that I can count on to have my back, say, man, look, uh, mm -hmm. I need to go to the doctor, I can't drive, can you come pick me up? Right. Those are the kind of friends that you want to have anywhere, yeah. well, particularly here. That's kind of hard. You almost have to be in like a, a city where there's a lot of expats, because if you're not, <clears throat> it's very hard to find a, a lot of friends and stuff in a very small province uh, town. Like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you, guys, right. if, if you've got a girl and you go back to a province, you're going to be alone and yeah. the, the newness is going to wear off because I can tell you, it doesn't matter how many times that you ask your Filipino knowingly that she speaks English and most of her family can speak English, that they won't. And it makes, right. it's, right. it's number one, it's rude. It's and it makes you feel uncomfortable, makes you feel left out. So it, if, you go, if you go to the province, you're going to feel left out a lot. I'm going to 50-50 agree with you on this. I think if you're going to live in this country, though, if we are True, kind yeah, of, you, need, you need to learn some, right. but I mean, if, if they're fluent enough in English and you ask them to speak it... Or she should at least be telling you what's going on. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, well, for example, your girlfriend lives in a very small city, and we're a small oh, yeah. province town, and you probably don't even see any other foreigners around most of the, most of the time. Uh, during the last festival, I saw yeah. one other foreigner, and I think he actually lives there, but right. I, we didn't speak. So, I, I mean, you can join some Facebook groups, but I, I don't know about you, but I've always found these Facebook groups. It seems to be a bunch of disgruntled expats. Like, you ask, I've seen people... Yeah. Ask for advice and they get attacked. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? and, and, yeah. Guys, you're not so. coming out here for negativity. You're, you're coming right. out here for less stress. Um, to take care of somebody and have them right. take care of you. Uh, mutual sort of respect. The Cebu uh, expat one seems like a lot of disgruntled people. But then I had there was one I joined that was Davao, and it seemed like a bunch of nice people. So you know, you, you never know what you'll find. True. Um, so even when you have a, a a girlfriend here, you definitely gotta you gotta get out. And you, you gotta have these types of things where you go have coffee with somebody. You know, well, yeah. you can't just. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm concerned about the election tomorrow. Right. Um, you know, it could directly affect my benefits as a as a veteran. Sure. The, the outcome. So yeah, I'm concerned about it, but. And you can't you, really talk you try about it. You try to explain it, what's going on sure. to your significant other, and it's like they, they just don't understand. 
Right. You know, like for example, but, uh, something with her elections here, you're not oh, yeah. really too concerned about either. It's, you yeah, know, you know the talking points of the candidates, you know, if you're interested. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I, have you picked up anything new since you've been in the Philippines, like like a new activity like me? I I used to do some scuba diving, but I've picked up snorkeling. I do a lot of snorkeling now. I've done um, snorkeling a few times. Um, you know, all, all my uh, activities I did in the States, I used to competition shoot every weekend. Okay, so you have to drop three, three, a three gun competition. Well, you can't can't own a gun, much less an AR-15 and a shotgun with a few pistols here. Right. So. Right. I guess you can go to the gun range. Have you ever... You can, but it's, it's outrageous. Is it really? To shoot here, yeah. Wow. Um, okay. I used to be in, into remote control RC planes, mm -hmm. cars, boats. I used to like doing that. If you were going to give somebody advice, I mean, he was maybe single and he comes out here, he wants to meet people, he wants to get busy. I, I just tell people join the gym, maybe uh, you could uh, go to the uh, coffee shop where everyone goes. You could uh, just pick up a. You, actually, you can join some uh, Facebook groups and you can get into biking. With yeah, you can. And, groups. You know, I'm. I'm travel, don't just sit here. Well, and I have my reservations about AFA. Mm -hmm. We've done videos about yep. that in the past. A foreign affair, which is like a um, company that uh, has like a big social where there's yeah. like a hundred women. And, and, yeah. and, the, and the thing about it is... But you met your girlfriend. Yeah. And if you don't do any communication before you come here, mm -hmm. because it's like, it's like $10 per email that you Expensive. exchange. Okay. And the one thing about... Filipinos is they have a one sentence track of mind. Mm -hmm. So within the course of five minutes, I would get four one sentence messages from the same girl when I was thinking about coming out here. Those so each cost ten dollars. Yes. <laughs> so I, I actually have more guys. I have more communication than I had in the plane ticket, my stay here, in the socials wow. before I came out here. Okay. So book a tour. I mean, you're gonna meet you're gonna meet 24 other guys, and I'm still friends with like seven of them that I was on the tour with. Right. Still Facebook friends. Every time they come out here, since I live here, we get together. So your thing was, I, I think you said, forget all that. Just find out when the social is, and just book the social and pay for the social. Yeah, you can. You like can do that too. Huh? Yes. Yeah, stay where you want to stay. Yeah. You know, the only advantage of the one advantage I can say about the tour mm -hmm. is that. All the guys stay in the same hotel. Okay. So, so you kind of you're coming down in the morning. You're eating breakfast together mm -hmm. at whatever restaurant they have, or you know, exchange notes and yeah. stuff. I mean, have a coffee together in, in the lobby. Or, or Make sure whatnot. you're not both pursuing the same girl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, talk, uh, talk about what's going on, yeah. how, how you feel, and you know, the general vibe. And you know, I mean, looking back at it, if I was a single guy coming to the country. I think it'd be kind of fun, probably. It, to, it, was to a go, so. it really was. It, yeah. was a, it was a blast. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's not cheap, but, and I don't know what the prices are now, but I mean, if you can come out here mm -hmm. and have everything paid for for two weeks and spend five grand or less yeah. and meet 500 women, it's yeah. worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, you know, the 20, 30 guys you're going to meet while you're here that you're going to want to bond it with at least five right and right. have something in common so you're going to start hanging out with that guy and the girl you're with and his girl right so i mean you got people. something to talk about yeah for sure anyway well that's basically the video today just fighting boredom i mean uh for me it's never been a problem you do have to kind of you got to put yourself out there a little bit you can't just hibernate in your room um in your apartment you gotta get out you, you gotta say hey do you guys mind if i join you or yeah, you know, de you definitely. Get, you get out. Definitely, if you've never ridden a motorcycle before, learn before you come out here. Yeah. Because it's not the you, place to learn. Well, you can. I you, learned. You can attest. Yeah, you can attest <laughs> to this though too that um, you can go see and do a lot more. I mean, there's yes, there's it opens so, up a whole new well, world. There's so many. There's so many things here, man. You, you yeah. can get on your bike and just get out on the road and ride and find things. Yeah, yeah for sure. And it's it's a beautiful place to be. That's unless it's raining, then, <laughs> then you're sitting at home 
waiting for it to stop, but... That was a game changer for me, having... Uh, I had lived in Davao two times. The first time, it's, it's a massive city, one of the biggest cities around, size-wise. The first time, I, I thought it was just okay, you know, but I thought it was expensive. But you're taking public taxis. transportation, like yes. jeepneys and right. you know, trikes and things like that, which takes, which takes forever to get around. Yep. And the second time, I had my motorbike, and it just totally, my appreciation of the city changed, and I was able to get out and meet people and do things. Yeah, so, it opened yeah. up a whole other layer that you hadn't seen before. Absolutely. So, anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, Sean, for joining me, as usual. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>